Hi, it's me, that lazy, lethargic anime YouTuber who barely uploads videos, and I'm here to talk about anime in 2020. So, uh, let's go do that. 2020 was a great year for anime. I mean, every year is a great year for anime, but I feel like there was clearly something for just about everyone this year. And given the current state of the world... A few moments later... Due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the negative effects it's had on everyone's mental state and society as a whole, I really don't think we could have asked for a better catalogue of new shows to find solace in and escape all the noise, if even for a little while. Despite the issues that plagued the real world throughout 2020, when it comes to anime I could think of no better way to kick off this new decade. With a ton of great adaptations, a good amount of original anime and some highly anticipated sequels to beloved shows, the lineup was nothing short of phenomenal this year. I honestly don't think I've given so many 9s and 10s in a single year before. So, given how strong the year was, I thought it would be a cool idea to go through every anime I watched in 2020 and give some brief thoughts on what I had on each of them, season by season, the fun, the good and the bad. I'll be including all TV, anime, OVAs and movies that I watched this year. And I think it goes without saying that these are just kind of my opinions and that I'm just having a bit of fun. And I know that's kind of obvious, but I also know that someone is going to be mad if I make fun of their favourite show because I didn't like it, so yeah. It's just a bit of fun, mate. It's just a wee bit of banter. So, so with all that said, let's get into the anime of 2020. Ishizoka Reviewers This show was pretty notable for being dropped by Funimation mid-simulcast without any prior warning, because apparently the company is being run by Puritans who think sex is some naughty naughty bad taboo thing that no anime fans should ever be exposed to. But honestly, controversy aside, it's a pretty great time. The humour is silly and on point, and the premise of the main cast going around trying to have sex with different fantasy races and giving each of them a detailed review is one that surprisingly doesn't get old. The show manages to keep it interesting all the way to the end, and I was laughing the whole time. So it's pretty good. Darwin's Game. A really solid death game series that had some pretty interesting ideas and some cool twists that made it stand out from other shows of a similar premise. The production values were a bit weak and it wasn't the most engaging series at times, but it's really not that bad. At all. Also, the main girl was pretty cute. Bifuri! Th this show does a lot of things that Sadar Online did. And yet everyone who hates that show loves this one for some reason. Ah. It's almost like... Uh, anyway, I like this show a lot. And the premise of having an MMO character with defense stats that are so ridiculously high to the point that nothing can damage you is both awesome and hilarious. The cast are all great, the production values are solid, and the show does an excellent job exploring the intricacies of the game world and its systems. Plus, watching Maple just tank everything ever gets old. Bofuri is easily one of the best MMO focused animes to come out in recent years, and I can't wait for the second season. Jibako Shonen Hanako kun. Honestly, this was a huge disappointment for me. I usually love these kind of monster of the week ghost story shows, but this one just didn't click with me. The aesthetic was cool, but I just found it kind of boring, honestly. And it's not really my jam. Keep your hands off Izakin. The best anime of 2020 because the character designs aren't attractive? Yeah, this is something I tell people say a lot. So some of them even have pretty big platforms. Yeah. This show is bad. It's not good. Go watch Bakuman and Shiro Bako instead. Yatogami chan Kansatsu Niki Nisatsumi. The second season of Yatogami was just more of the first season. Pretty average comedy that pokes fun at the quirks of regional Japanese dialects, specifically the Nagoya dialect. There, there's not much to say about it, it's alright. Hintatsu. Probably the most boring and pointless shit I watched this year. Like, just, just, just look at this. <laughs> My Hero Academia Season 4. I, I know this technically started airing last year, but it was still airing in 2020, so fuck it. I saw a lot of people get mad at this one because clouds in the background and because it doesn't look exactly like the manga because it's an anime? Also, apparently they skipped like two scenes from the manga or something? I don't know. But fuck knows what everyone was on about because this was probably one of the strongest seasons of the series yet for me. And I generally don't see any drop in production values or storytelling at all. Looking forward to season 5. Made in the Abyss, Stone of the Deep Soul. A fantastic sequel movie to one of the best anime of the last decade. Easily one of the best anime films I've seen in a long, long time. Phenomenal and a must watch. And I hope that more of the manga gets adapted soon. Goblin Slayer, Goblin's Crown. This is a sequel movie to the anime from last year where the first 30 minutes are actually just a recap of the anime for some reason. Which, which means the actual film is like an hour long. Uh. But despite that weirdness, this is a really good and fun movie that's just as badass and entertaining as the TV series was. It's nothing super groundbreaking and it's not going to win any awards, but it's a fun dark fantasy action flick and sometimes that's all something needs to be good. I hope we get a season 2 one day. Damachi, season 2 OVA. 
this is the big nut. Gagia Sama, mid is what. Look, I really don't fucking get the hype behind this series. It's painfully average. There are much better shows that do the exact same thing. Go watch those instead. Tower of God. I mean, a fucking 22 minute long video about this one earlier this year, but to give you the short version, this is easily one of the best anime of 2020, and it's a gripping character driven story with some of the best rating and visuals to come out of anime this year. Oh, and despite what people will tell you, it's actually a perfect adaptation of the source material. My friend Dillerick, a long time fan of the Mamwa, did a video on how well adapted the anime actually was. Go watch it, I'll put a link in the description or something. Glettner. A pretty fun fighting shonen series where the main character fights in a super powered fursuit suit and a bishop alien grants people wishes. It's it's basically a shonen for furries. It's pretty good, but I feel the show revealed all of its cards way too early, making the second half a lot less interesting and just pretty unsatisfying overall. Not a bad show, but it could have been so much better. The first half is really great though. The Great Pretender. I wish I could pretend that this show wasn't awful. Brand new animal. Alright, I'll let my best friend Talentless Banana talk about this show because uh, they'll be able to convey my thoughts better than I ever could, so... Have at it, Banana-chan. Ooh boy, brand new animal fucking sucks. Not only is it just a boring slot to sit through, but it tries to tackle racism in probably the worst way I've ever seen in fiction. The best way to describe this series is as vast as an ocean, as deep as a puddle. Racism is a very interesting topic to base a story around, and it can be really powerful when it's done right. Sadly, brand new animal never tries to be anything but surface level. Thanks for having me on Leth, back to you. ReZero Season 2. After a wait of four years, we finally get the second season of one of the greatest anime of the last decade. Well, the first half of it. And it's easily one of the best shows to come out this year. Or ever. ReZero continues to be a masterpiece of emotional, character-driven storytelling with some of the most detailed and well-thought-out world-building I've ever seen from not just anime, but media as a whole. This series is just pure fucking brilliance and deserves every ounce of praise it's received over the years. It's honestly that good. The God of High School. I keep hearing that this was a bad adaptation of a great manhwa and that a lot of important content was skipped, but as an anime only, I didn't really notice and was perfectly satisfied with what it was. That and one of my friends is a huge fan of the manhwa told me what was actually skipped and changed and none of it really seems that major. I mean, a lot of the changes actually seem to be for the better, but I'm just basing that off of what I've been told. But adaptation shenanigans aside, The God of High School is a solid fight in Shonen series with absolutely gorgeous animation and some of the best fight scenes to come from anime this year. Oh yeah, and the opening is really fucking good. I like it. Rent a Girlfriend. Really funny, charming and cute romantic comedy series with a silly but fun gimmick and some really great waifus. Don't get the hate for this one. It's a good rom-com. Pretty funny. The Misfit of Demon King Academy. From what I saw, this seemed to be the punching bag for those people who like to screech a generic light novel adaptation, anything that involves a fantasy setting in a school, but this was easily one of the best shows of its season for me. It takes the overpowered protagonist trope and cranks it up to infinitely insane levels of absurdity, making for an incredible entertaining series. Like, the main character literally says at one point, did you think killing me would make me die? <laughs> this shit is great. Easy 10. People need to stop hating fun. Fire Force Season 2. Fire Force comes back even stronger in its second season and continues to be one of the best battle shonen to come out in recent years. And everyone's going to continue to overlook how great it is because clothing is flammable and Tamaki has boobs. Wonderful. Sword Art Online World of Underworld Part 2. Hey look, it's A1 Picture's new anime series Sword Art Online and you should check it out if you get the chance. Anime of the Summer. No, really, this time it actually is the anime of the summer. It's fucking perfect and the best ending this franchise could ever have asked for. Until Unit you know, O-Ring gets adapted in like 5 years time or something. Mizaki-chan. Big anime titties trigger every single Woki and Normie in the anime community and I couldn't be happier. Lapis Relights. This is the first time I've ever actually found myself enjoying an idol show and what's definitely one of this year's most underrated gems. It's really great, give it a watch. Japan Sinks 2020. I, I randomly binged this on a day on Netflix with my wife and we really enjoyed it. I, I don't have much else to say about it honestly. I'm not really sure why I've seen a lot of negativity for this one, it's pretty good. My Hero Academia over here. Yeah, it's a decent over here that serves as a fun side story. It's not a must watch or anything, but if you're a fan of the series, it's definitely worth checking out. Date Alive, Dead or Bullet. The best Date Alive girl gets her own feature in film and it's fucking incredible. Burn the Witch. After the travesty that was Bleach's Thousand Year Blood War arc, I thought Taita Kubo had finally run out of ways to retcon previously established world building in the Bleach universe. I thought wrong. This is fucking awful. Journey of Elena. I wasn't sure what to expect with this one, but I ended up being pleasantly surprised. This is a really charming show that follows the main character as she journeys across the land and it's the perfect combination of comfy as fucking badass. Really good show. Danmachi Season 3. 
The match continues to be one of the best fantasy series currently being adapted, and this third season is the best one yet. If you like the first two seasons, you won't be disappointed. Attack on Titan Final Season This is technically a Winter 2021 anime, but it started airing this year, so... Fuck it. I mean, it's Attack on Titan. What, what can I say that's not already been said? This final season is shaping up to be something really fantastic, and the story is going to even more insane and unexpected places that I just never saw coming. I look forward to seeing how this wild ride concludes next year. Talentless Nana Not only is this show the sleeper hit of its season, because literally no one is talking about it in any capacity, but it's also the best show I've watched this year, with the best twist opening I've seen from an anime in a long, long time. And despite my initial worries that the show was going to sink into mediocrity after said twist, the show continues to be an engaging watch, with every single episode changing things up and taking the story and characters in unexpected directions at every turn. It's a show that's incredibly hard to talk about without major spoilers, but if you haven't watched Talentless Nana, I strongly recommend you do so. And if you do decide to watch it, go in blind. The first episode will just blow you away. Talentless Nana is easily the best anime of this year, by a fucking mile. And yeah, I'll probably make a video on it at some point, because apparently no one else in Anitube even wants to seem to talk about this genius series, so fuck it. I'll do it, eventually. So yeah, Talentless Nana is my anime of the year. And with that, I can't think of a better place to wrap this video up, so that's it. That's the anime of 2020 that I watched. Like I said, it was a pretty solid year for shows. I liked most of what I watched, and I still have plenty to get caught up on that I still haven't had the chance to check out yet. So, I guess I'm gonna go do that now. Catch up on the show is a mist. But what did you watch this year? What were your favourites? Feel free to share them. Let's get a discussion going. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing for more content. I don't really have a very regular upload schedule because I do this as a hobby in my spare time and I only really make videos when I feel like it. But I do appreciate each and every person who decides to stick around and listen to what I have to say. I'm also starting a podcast channel with my friends Talentless Banana and Velorix where we plan to discuss anime and other kinds of degenerate weep shit. The link for this will be in the description if you want to subscribe and all that jazz. But with all that said, here's to another great year of anime in 2021. I've been left and I hope you all have a very wonderful day and a very happy new year. And I'll see you all next year.